Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagum Radian here at the Navy League's annual Sea Airspace Conference and Trade Show just outside Washington, D.C. And we have with us Jim Miller, who is the uh, Director of Business Development for Combat Vehicles at BAE Systems, uh, Inc. in the United States. Jim, thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you for having me. Um, so in a sea of haze gray underway, uh, there's this uh, splash of uh, green camouflage here. Obviously, it's the Marine Corps' new uh, amphibious tractor. It's an Amtrak replacement. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the evolution of this program. Obviously, we started with the expeditionary fighting vehicle. We've gone through some, uh, yeah. some, some trips along the journey. Give us sort of a thumbnail sketch on how we got to this point and what the Marine requirement is for the, for the new vehicle. Okay, so this is the amphibious combat vehicle. It's our, our entry into the competition, so ACV. Um, the program started with, you know, at, the, at the conclusion of EFV, which was several years ago. Uh, when, that, when the Marines shut down that program, they began looking at other uh, amphibious carriers for their Marines. The first step of it was a program called MPC, which is a Marine Personnel Carrier. And uh, as the Marines looked at that requirement, uh, it gave industry a chance to work with the Marines to develop some kind of, they turned out to be non-developmental programs for ACV. But it really was a foundational kind of approach to what could we do with a wheeled vehicle to move Marines amphibiously. And uh, that, that, that's right, because historically they've been amphibious tractors, right? right I mean, if you look at the current... Vehicles. That's right. So it's always been tracked vehicles. This was a wheeled vehicle. And the idea was how do we improve over the AAV survivability, get better operations ashore. And the initial MPC requirement was built for kind of a fording capability, not a true ship to shore uh, amphibious capability. Uh, at some point, the Marines realized that with MPC, they had a greater, greater capability than they asked for, and it led it to the ACV program. Uh, the ACV program was uh, designed to be non-developmental, so learn from what you uh, did during MPC, use those vehicles that are now non-developmental items, and can we go to an amphibious requirement uh, that fits an AAV-like capability for the Marines. And the Marines decided they could. And so that great couple years, I think it was three years of foundational work with MPC, gave the Marines this non-developmental opportunity with ACV and they took the opportunity. Um, my view, a lot of people's view, what a great way to do an acquisition, uh, to speed it up, do something non-developmental. Uh, it's already focused on what the Marines are looking for and just seems to be uh, you know, uh, something we ought to study in the acquisitions world. Um, I, and it is, it is seen as a model in terms of like do that testing, do that building block right. sort of approach, take a look at what's out there on the market. And obviously the Marine Corps themselves had to make a major requirements decision to not put speed, right? Because right. EFV was all about the speed to which the vehicle itself can get from the ship to shore as opposed to the amphibious capabilities of the vehicle and then put them on a ship to shore connector that can move a little more quickly. And obviously we've gone to the second generation of the LCAC. Yeah. But talk to us a little bit about what the requirement for the vehicle is and what is the genesis of your vehicle? What's the DNA that you guys tapped okay. in order to produce your product? So the, the base requirement is the Marines want to be able to move 10 to 13 Marines uh, plus three crew uh, both ashore on land. So there's a set of requirements about land mobility and survivability against things like underbody blast and things like that that are very critical uh, to this program. And in a lot of ways, they're improvements over the old AAV program, uh, pretty close to the uh, survivability update program the Marines are running on the AAVs right now. And then there's an amphibious requirement uh, to move from a, uh, a carrier to the shore. And not necessarily ship launch and recover in this first set of requirements, but to move amphibiously from a interim vehicle or an intermediate vehicle to the shore. And what speed and distance are have the Marines specified? Uh, I'm not real clear on those, but I'll give it to you. But we're looking at uh, speeds of about six knots is what they're looking for in, in the ocean. And I believe it's 12 nautical miles of distance, but I have to confirm those for you. Uh, so talk to us about what vehicle you guys went to, right? Because this was a non-developmental item. You guys have built a whole series of prototypes. I want to talk to you a little bit about the sea trials you guys are conducting um, off the Italian coast. But talk to us about where you guys went for the base vehicle okay. that you guys have modified into an amphibious carrier. So, well, that's the key point for us. So we went looking for an amphibious vehicle that we could adjust to the ground requirements. And we saw amphibious, amphibiosity, as it were, as to be the the core critical thing we had to have for the United States Marines. It's what they do. They're amphibious. 
And so we went kind of, and we have this great story, we went around the world, you know, but we, uh, we looked at a lot of... There was Jim in his backpack going you know, around the world yeah. on a voyage of discovery. Right. Yeah, so we went around the world literally looking at everybody who had something that was amphibious and said, will that meet MPC requirements? And we, after looking at everybody, the, the, our best partner was Iveco. And Iveco has a vehicle that's designed as an amphibious vehicle from the ground up. They, they started with the idea of amph amphibiosity, right? <laughs> We're going to get there. And uh, that's how they designed this vehicle. And so uh, they had moved leaps and bounds ahead of other folks. Uh, we went to them, got a good team agreement, and we're, we're teamed up on this program together now on ACV. Um, so that's been the case since MPC time. It's carried through to today. We have great success uh, with this teaming agreement. Uh, what we have going on now is as we're in EMD, we're building prototypes for the Marines. There's 16 of those. They're all in production right now. Uh, number 10 was on its way to be delivered to the Marines now. Um, the first production vehicle we had Iveco build in Italy. It's still in Italy. It's identical to the production vehicles we're building now. And it gave us a, cap a capability to do some contractor testing on that vehicle while the Marines are doing their testing regime on the production vehicles, the prototypes we're under contract to provide to the Marines. And so that's been pretty critical for us because uh, you know Iveco being part of a great network that includes Fiat and GM, they have all kinds of access to test equipment, test tracks, and interestingly enough, last week uh, they had an opportunity to go out and demonstrate the capability of our vehicle, which they call Super AV in Italy and we call ACV here, uh, to demonstrate it off an Italian amphibious ship. And so we did sea launch and recovery last week in the Mediterranean with the Italian Navy providing a ship to do that demonstration. So kind of a big deal for us, pretty exciting to get it out in the real ocean and not in a test facility somewhere or close to shore somewhere, but out in, out in the deep, deep Mediterranean. And uh, the first day of it was particularly exciting because it was a rehearsal day. We had Sea State 3 and the Italians decided to launch anyway, and the vehicle did great in Sea State 3. And then uh, the following day in Sea State 2, we did the real demonstration for everybody that had come to see it. Uh, so a very successful test at sea. Uh, I wouldn't call it a test. We didn't do test parameters, but demonstration at sea, which has given us some key feedback that we can take and uh, help when the Marines get to their at sea testing with the vehicles we provided them. So, so talk to us um, a little bit about the timeline of the program. So you're de delivering the vehicles to the Marine Corps. How many vehicles? It's 16 by contract. 16 by contract, each of the teams, and they're going to play with them and figure out what they want to do with the program. But obviously, what's their decision timeline look like? When do you see a down select? And then when do they want first vehicle delivery? Walk us through what the schedule would be, um, you know, before you win, and then yeah. hopefully, you know, from your perspective, if you win, you know, where does it go then? So we expect to see, uh, you know, so on vehicle deliveries, we already started delivering vehicles. Uh, we delivered four initially ahead of schedule. There was a Marine Corps incentive to do that. We got Fordham fast. Uh, we now have, uh, we're on schedule delivering the other 16. They all got to be delivered this summer. Uh, they're all going straight into tests. The, the Marines have a really good process called VAR, a vehicle acceptance review, that it's a new acquisition thing. It's, uh, it's really a smart idea. It's something you got to talk to the Marines about. Uh, we're going through that with each vehicle so it's ready. They reduce risk and accept the vehicle and know it's ready for test. And they're going straight to test uh, across the United States, and literally in every direction you can think of. Um, the Marines will run uh, those tests. And I, the Marine Corps schedule, I think we're testing, and then it's followed by SAIC testing. Uh, there's some overlap there at certain test locations. Um, but essentially, the tests are all done this summer, this year. Uh, our proposals, our final proposals are due in the new year early, I think, uh, probably in January. Uh, so we should see a final RFP at the end of this year and with a response due in early next year. And then decisions are supposed to be made in June, late June, July timeframe next year. And so we ought to see that uh, decision, uh, you know, about 18 months or so from now uh, when the Marines decide which one they want, SIC or, or us. And, uh, and you mentioned it, there are two teams that are in it, you and Iveco, uh, but as well as SAIC teamed with STK, which is Singapore, with Singapore Technologies Kinetics. Um, talk to us, 
you know, we're going to have this conversation with them as well, but tell us, you know, what you think the attributes of your vehicle are yeah. over what they're offering. So we, uh, first of all, is it's built as an amphibious vehicle from the ground up. I mean, we didn't start with a ground vehicle and go amphibious. It's exactly the opposite. And so that gives us a certain, uh, certain capability in the water that uh, we think you can't, just can't be beat. Uh, on top of that, we meet the survivability requirements ashore. So uh, that building from the ground up is amphibious, I think is pretty critical to what the Marines are looking for, uh, as we demonstrated you know, just this last week over in the Mediterranean. So that's a critical thing. The size of the vehicle is size for the Marine Corps squads. There's no change to the organizational structure. So it, they have a 13-man squad, 13-person squad soon. Uh, we have a 13 uh, Marine vehicle, so uh, with three crew on top of that. So those are two real critical things about our vehicle that I think give us, give us an edge. Uh, and uh, give me the, what's the weight of the vehicle? I'll get it to you in a little bit. <laughs> and uh, numbers, right? um, and uh, let me ask you one last thing. Where are you guys going to be producing the vehicle in the United States? Obviously, U.S. production is very important, particularly important now with President Trump's uh, Buy America, Build America right. uh, initiatives. Where are you guys going to be manufacturing the vehicle should you guys win? So it's York, Pennsylvania is where we're manufacturing. And in prototype, we have a lot of kidding coming from Italy. The intent is to move most of that supply chain, a good chunk of that supply chain to the United States. Uh, the good thing about Italy is they're part of the big Fiat GM conglomerate, which includes Case New Holland. Case New Holland's right up the road from us in York. Uh, the engine and things like that can be easily produced right there and uh, right there down the road from us in Pennsylvania. So uh, pretty important to us to bring it to the United States, make this a U.S. program, uh, just take it step by step as we move through the program. Jim, thanks very much and best of luck. Thank you.